Hello and welcome to freephotoshop.com and this week's free video tutorial looking at the eyedropper tool inside Photoshop. I've already opened an image called eyedropping that I have on screen in front of me. It's a photograph of Spaceship Earth in Orlando, Florida and all I've done is added this spectrum of colours gradient on the left hand side of the photograph. So when would we use the eyedropper tool inside Photoshop? Well you may have heard people using the term lifting and that's because using the eyedropper is what we would generally class as lifting a colour from the screen and placing it inside either the foreground or background swatches. And to show you what I mean, I'm going to go ahead and select the eyedropper tool either by clicking the eyedropper icon over here in the toolbox or pressing the letter I on the keyboard. If you're having trouble finding it then it's possible it's been hidden away by another tool because if I go ahead and click and hold on the icon you'll see it shares the same slot as three other tools. So go ahead and select the eyedropper from the flyout menu and you'll notice that the cursor changes to a little dropper icon like so. Now this tool's really simple to use. All we have to do is click on the colour we want to lift and that colour will be placed into the foreground swatch. And You'll notice I can click and drag with the tool and the eyedropper keeps track of whatever colour happens to be underneath the eyedropper when I release I have that exact colour available as the foreground swatch. But what if I want that colour that I'm clicking to be loaded as my background colour instead of the foreground? Well then I would go ahead and hold down the Alt key here on the PC, that's the Option key on the Mac, and click it. So I've always got control over whether I add the colour to the foreground or background swatch. Now I think it's fair to say that we don't get many options at all when we're working with this particular tool. In fact, we can go up to the options bar and see that we only really get one option to choose from, and that's something called the sample size. At the moment we have the sample size set to point sample, which means that the eyedropper is going to lift the colour from the one pixel that we're clicking on. Now if you're trying to match up web graphics that may be just the behaviour you need, it may be exactly what you want the eyedropper to do. As you know, whatever pixel you click on, you'll get the exact colour value for. Sometimes though, it may not be what you're after. For example, if I want to select the colour of this sky in this photograph, then I may want to avoid just lifting the one and only pixel I click on. And if I zoom in, you'll see why. As we get closer and closer to the pixels, you'll notice that we start getting a lot of variations between the different blues that make up the sky colour. So if I'm going to use the point sample each time, I'll get a different result. Instead, I'm going to lift a colour based on the average of a group of pixels. And if I come up here to the sample size, I can choose to average a group of 9 pixels, which is 3 by 3 a group of 25 pixels, which is 5 by 5 and so on until we get up to the group that measures 101 by 101 pixels, which totals out at just over 10,000 pixels. To get a good representation of the colour of the sky, I want to use something like 5x5 five five, for example. However, just to demonstrate exactly what I mean with this averaging that's going on, I'll choose the 101x101 101 option, and then I'll come down to the top of this very dark palm tree, which is the bottom of the image here, and give it a click. And instead of lifting the colour of the palm tree, I get a muted pink. And that's because, if I grab the marquee tool here, when we click with the eyedropper, we're averaging the 10,000 or so pixels around that spot. And so the average of all those colours is being reflected in the colour we lift. If I go ahead and change the sample size from 101 to just single point, and then Alt or Option click that same spot to add it to the background colour, now I get a black colour in the swatches because we're no longer evaluating a large group of pixels. We're just literally evaluating that one pixel that we're clicking on. OK, another thing you may want to do to improve the accuracy of what you're clicking is to change the cursor to a more precise version. And you can do that either by uh, using the preferences by coming up here to the edit menu and selecting preferences from the bottom of the list and then choosing cursors and you'll see the option under the section here. Or you can switch between cursors when necessary using the keyboard. So I'll cancel out of this dialog box and then I'll press the caps lock key on the keyboard to switch to the precise version of this cursor. And then I can press the caps lock key once again to switch back. Another thing you can do is to change the behavior of lifting colors to the two swatches. And to do that in older versions of Photoshop, you could simply target the foreground background swatches in the toolbox here. 
In newer versions of Photoshop, you need to come over to the color palette, and if it's not open by default, then you can find it available under the Windows menu at the top of the program here. And then you have duplicates of the foreground and background swatches once you're inside the color palette. And you should see that the foreground swatch has a little black border around it, indicating that as far as the eyedropper goes, it's the active swatch. To make this background swatch active, just give it a click. And now, if we lift a color in the document, we'll add it directly to the background swatch like so. Of course, if we Alt or Option click now with the tool, we'll add it to the foreground swatch. To return that behavior to normal, we'll just go ahead and click that foreground swatch once again in the colors palette, and all the normal behavior has been restored. We can also access those sample options by right-clicking in the image window itself, and that's where we also get the option of copying the hexadecimal color code to the clipboard for use in another application, and that's especially useful if you're designing for the web. Also be aware that if you're using the text brush, gradient, pencil, line or paint bucket tools, you can access the eyedropper on the fly by holding down either the Alt or Option keys. You can also access the color sampler tool whilst using the eyedropper by holding down the Shift key like so. And I can see I've got the color sampler active by the way, by way of this little target icon above the eyedropper being visible and also the plus sign on the lower right hand side of it. Another thing we can do with the eyedropper is if we click and drag we can lift colors from anywhere on the screen just as long as you start the click and drag inside the image window. So we can even come up here to the blue bar at the top of the screen and lift the color from there. Finally here's a great way of selecting colors from another application such as the example I'm going to use right here and that's Internet Explorer. What you want to do is arrange the applications like I'm doing so on screen. So Photoshop is one side, Internet Explorer is the other, and then starting off in Photoshop, click and drag the eyedropper over to the other application. So you have to start in Photoshop, you've got to do that in order for this to work. And then once you've started in Photoshop, just drag to wherever you want to go on the screen. And I'm going to release in the freephotoshop.com header image to record the color inside Photoshop. By the way, if you want to know more about saving these colors once you've lifted them, check out my free video tutorial on Photoshop swatches. Well, thanks as always for joining me here at freephotoshop.com, and I'll see you next time.